What's up guys? My name is Cody and we are back for another video. This time, full card breakdown for UFC Vegas 70. We got Nikita Krylov taking on Ryan Spann. And honestly, this card's pretty good. A um, lot of people were not a huge fan of, at least name value wise, the card last week. I think this one's honestly better. Yeah, there's some ridiculous fights on this, but some fun ones. So I'm really look honestly looking forward to this one. Um, make sure you leave a like on the video, leave a comment, click subscribe, turn your post notifications on. We do this for every single card, and we got a banger pay-per-view next week. But there's some sneaky good fights on this card. Before we get into it, last week, such a minefield of a card, I was surprised. I actually picked, I think, every fight except the main event. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so Jessica Andrade cost me a little, but at least we hit Jamal Emers as an underdog, so we made a little, like, basically went dead even um i had a little but a little two fighter parlay but there was like not a lot of money on that so um yeah i mean um basically a couple bucks positive basically an even night not a lot of betting last week but i think there's some good spots this week uh just gonna be about get, getting them before the the value's gone so with uh, all that out of the way man let's get into this first fight we got Jose Johnson taking on Garrett Armfield. Man, uh, Jose, he, his record's pretty crazy because, uh, I mean, decent amount of pro fights, but holy crap, I don't know if I've ever seen this many amateur fights. Pretty insane. Um, actually came in, or went pro after after losing two fights. I mean, one of these was to Charles Johnson, but, uh, you know, has a ton of fights, man, combined, if you combine his amateur career, an absolute ton of fights, and I mean, the guy's dangerous, he finishes a lot of people, he's got a lot of power, he's obviously huge for the weight class, six feet tall, has a bantam weight, you don't see that often, but, um, you know, there's a reason why he's, you know, had trouble, whether it was amateur or pro, and it's, man, the takedown defense, the submission defense. I mean, this guy is constantly being put in bad positions. Um, Garrett Armfield's not like a huge wrestler by any means. And I mean, he's not going to be as experienced. He came in against David Onama, short notice, um, was submitted. But I mean, you know, didn't look terrible in the fight. Uh, I think he is the rightful favorite in this. I mean, I just think he's the more well put, to get put together fighter. Uh, even with so much less fights, um, I think he probably could mix in a couple takedowns. I mean, Johnson's been taken down just left and right. Um, and I mean, he's dangerous, but I think the minute winner is, is Armfield. So I'm going to go Garrett Armfield. I'm going to say probably, I'm going to say TKO on the ground after, after landing some shots on the feet as well. I think the ground, uh, the standup is going to be pretty pretty back and forth, but I think uh, he can mix in a takedown or two, even though he hasn't been a huge wrestler, because um, you'd just be dumb not to. So give me Armfield, TKO, second round. Let's go into the next fight. Next up, we got Haley Cowan against a Eileen Perez, and uh, not mad at uh, Haley. You're not mad at it, but uh, on a serious note, um, you know, pretty d decent i mean fought L at lfa had some pretty good wins i mean obviously hasn't fought like crazy competition yet uh actually first pro lost to victoria leonardo uh pretty interesting uh but you know looked okay in the contender series a split decision win pretty close eileen perez uh you know fought stephanie egger in her uh debut Stephanie Edgar's a good grappler, man. Good level, good high level judo, um, good submission. So you know, not the worst loss of all time. I think Perez is pretty good, but uh, you know, I, I do see why H Haley Cowan is is the favorite. I think she's probably going to be the stronger girl. Probably going to be a little bigger, um, even with Perez uh, having fought at one forty five. I think uh, Haley should be the favorite, but. This is a pretty lower level fight. I mean, I do like, you know, some of what I've seen from these girls, but I th I'm going to go with the one with, you know, the more momentum behind her right now. I think she should be the favorite. I think she can get on top early. Um, we'll just see how that gas tank works for her. 
but uh, not one I'd be looking to bet. Um, give me Haley Cowan. Um, we'll go into the next fight. Nurulo Aliyev taking on uh, Rafael Alva Alves. Alves, man, this dude's fights are pretty fun. I mean, his last fight against Drew Dober, that was... It's, you, you see it being memed on Twitter all the time now. I mean, did end up getting finished in the third and does tend to slow down. I mean, the only person who didn't finish him was Demir Esmagulov, and I mean, he's more of a decision guy. Alva is just super dangerous, super explosive, good guillotine. Um, definitely can knock you out, can submit you, but he just gets tired. And uh, Aliyev, you know... Not really been much of a finisher, but I do think, uh, you know, Alves is the type to kind of turn you into one. And we're going to see, I mean, if you can't finish Alves, if you beat him and you can't finish him, it's, I mean, that's, unless you're Ismagulov, it just doesn't tend to happen. So you got to think he is probably still going to be an exciting fight, even though Aliyev is one that's a little bit more position over submission, kind of just wants to control you. He, decent wrestling, the, uh, you know, striking's not bad. I do think Alves could catch him early. Um, but I'm gonna go Aliyev to get the get mix in some takedowns. The striking be pretty competitive. Just you know, watch out for that guillotine. Uh, you know, I mean, on the feet, I think Aliyev can hold his own, uh, especially as the fight goes on. So give me Aliyev by decision. Um, I I think this is gonna be a fun fight, but I, I don't know if he'll get him out of there. He just hasn't been much of a finisher. Maybe if Alves gas completely, which is very plausible. Then he will, but I'm gonna go by decision. Let's move on to the next one. We got Joe Selecki taking on Carl Deaton. And uh Selecki, a huge favorite, man. But uh when you go through the tape, you can kind of see why. I mean, Carl Deaton, pretty good striking. Uh grappling's okay. I mean, nothing just not on Selecki's level on the ground. He's gonna have to keep it on the feet, and it's not like he has a ton of power, he's more like a volume guy. So I don't really see him knocking Selecki out. I mean, he could catch him with something. It's it's very, I mean, it's four-ounce gloves. But I just feel like Selecki's striking is not that bad. I think he can mix it into his grappling. I think he's the big favorite for a reason. I think Selecki's going to get this guy down. And he's either going to control him easily on his back for, you know, probably two of the three rounds at least. And when I say that, I'm saying he's going to rack up damn near 10, round, 10 minutes of control. Or he's going to submit him. I don't see Selecki really striking with him much. I think he's going to be able to get the takedowns. His wrestling's not great, but I think he will get there, even if it's, if it's with jumping on the back, like we saw him do against uh, Austin Hubbard not too long ago, from, from the feet. I just feel like he'll find a way to mix in the grappling, to use the grappling. I don't think it'll be a whole lot of mixing. And I think he's going to find the submission. Give me Joe Selecki by submission. Probably second round. Um, next up. This is a pretty fun fight. We got Odie Osborne taking on Charles Johnson. Osborne honestly had a decent amount of hype. I mean, when he was, you know, first came into the UFC. I mean, he lost the cop cape. Um, but, uh, you know, cape's pretty good, honestly. He's pretty legit, pretty dangerous, especially early on in the round. Um, you know, caught him with a flying knee. But then he did come back with two good wins. It was that Tyson Nam fight that just, I mean, Nam is kind of KO or bust. He does have power, but it was just like the recklessness. He went for like a flying knee while he was like 20 feet away and then just gets countered. It, it wasn't a great look. And uh, Charles Johnson is coming in off short notice, but man, he always, he, he you never really see him slow down. He always, you know, ready to fight 15. He kind of beat the hell out of Jimmy Flick in the last fight. Put up a decent fight against Muhammad Makayev. You know, uh, did, didn't look, you know, like out of place. Um, I think Charles Johnson is the more well-rounded fighter. I think Osborne, you know, has the more, you know, he has the more power. He's probably the overall better finisher. But, you know, I, I think Charles Johnson, even though he's coming out on short notice, as long as he makes it out of those early, you know, oh, my dad. Dab for the yawn. Um, if you're in the inner circle and you watch stream all the time, you probably know why I'm so tired. It's been a hectic couple days. But anyways, 
Charles Johnson coming in off short notice. I still feel like he, as long as he can get out of that like first round, first round and a half, I think he'll start to take over. I think his grappling is honestly better than people give credit for. I think he's the better grappler of the two, and I just feel like uh, you know he over the three rounds he's going to be the better fighter overall. Uh, mixing in a couple takedowns, I could see him doing that. Even if it stays on the feet, I think. You know, as long as he can watch out for the big shots from Osborne, who does, again, have a decent amount of power, Charles Johnson should be able to get it done. So give me Charles Johnson. I'm going to take him by decision, though. Next up, we got Jordan Levitt taking on Victor Martinez. And uh, Jordan Levitt coming off that loss to Patty the Batty, Patty Pimblett. Uh, so I know everybody's kind of, like, ready to, you know, count this guy out. but And, and, and I mean, his style isn't going to work against a lot of guys. But I do feel like, you know, this is actually a decent matchup for him. Victor Martinez going to have a huge advantage on the striking. I mean, uh, it's not that he's beat any crazy guys here. But, you know, he's if you watch his fights, his striking is pretty good, man. He's going to have a huge advantage on the feet. He's going to hit a lot harder. Um, Jordan Levitt's got that awkward style on the feet, man. He's, he's just awkward in general, in the cage, outside the cage. The thing that I don't like about this is just Victor Martinez, man. I don't see him being able to... Jordan Levitt doesn't have some crazy wrestling. His jiu-jitsu is great, but his wrestling's not. But at the same time, man, Victor Martinez is getting taken down in all of these fights. You watch his fights, he's constantly giving up his back. He's constantly getting taken down. And if you're going to get taken down by Jordan Levitt, the last thing you want to do is give up your back. So I'm going to take Jordan Levitt by first-round sub. I think this is a good bounce-back spot for him. I think someone's about to get twerked on. And, uh, yeah, I got to go Jordan Levitt, first-round sub. On the feet, yeah, Victor Martinez, he could definitely catch him and knock him out. But I just feel like, man, I haven't seen enough takedown defense from him to be confident that he can keep it on the feet for long enough to land a good shot. So I feel like Jordan Levitt's going to take him down here early and bounce back, get it back on the win column. And uh, we'll see. It's going to be a good fight, though. I, uh, it's one of the more closely lined fights on the card, and I get it. Next up, though, we got Gabriela Fernandez taking on Jasmine Jazdavicious. Jazz do a vicious. I used to think it was Jazdavicious, but I was like, man, that's so dope. But then I heard her pronounce it, and I guess I was wrong. But anyways, Gabriela, another striker versus grappler matchup here. You know, especially after Andrade burned me last week. And I know it was on short notice, but man, that she looked so bad. And I'm not going to lie, I already don't bet a lot on women's MMA, so... I just this is one where I just when I read this I'm there's zero percent chance I'm betting on that. Let me preface all this with that. Otherwise, I, I will say I, this is a dogger pass shot for me. Gabriella is gonna have advantages on the feet. She's gonna be the quicker, more athletic girl on the feet. But I think Jasmine needs to get back to her wrestling, especially coming off the loss. Uh, not a great performance in her last fight. You know, everybody was kind of putting her on the parlays, and she was kind of the apple pie shitter. Uh, <laughs> But, um, I mean, that's not something I do. But if you're some someone who does that, you're probably against this girl right now. Me having, she didn't lose me any money. It was a little too big of a line for low-level women's MMA for me. So if, if this is a spot where, okay, if you're going to bet lower-level women's MMA, bet it as a plus money. You know what I mean? Um, I like Jasmine. I think she can get the, some, some takedowns here. I think the strike is going to be pretty close. I don't think... Gabriella's just going to outclass her on the feet, even though she is the better striker. Um, as long as Jasmine makes in the takedowns, I think she should be the favorite. So I'll take the underdog here. I'll take Jasmine. There's not a whole lot of under. There's a couple underdogs in this card I like, but we're going to go Jasmine, not one I want to bet on, though. Next up, we got Eric Gonzalez taking on Trevor Pete. Um, pretty interesting. Eric Gonzalez coming off two straight losses. Obviously, everybody knows the Jim Miller fight, he was knocked out. Then Terrence McKinney got the standard rear naked choke. That was uh, definitely two tough performances for Eric Gonzalez. And I kind of like the guy. I mean, the nickname, the Ghost Pepper. Uh, I like his style. Um, if you see him on MMA Twitter, he, he's a pretty likable guy. But Trevor Peak, man, this guy's style, man. He's, he's a lot of fun. Watching, going through the tape a little bit to, to get ready for this one. Uh, pretty fun. He is definitely an all-action fighter. Um, just goes for it, man. I mean, 7-0 right now professionally. 
you've seen him face some adversity, but um, and I mean, obviously as an amateur, he was choked out once, but uh, you see him get hit. He does get hit, but he just if he can turn it into like a brawl, he'll just, he'll you know he'll have success there. And I mean, I do think Eric Gonzalez, you know. He probably tries to keep the fight a little bit more technical. I think Trevor Peak's just going to try to goad him into a bar fight. and uh, But Eric Gonzalez kind of fights like that a little bit himself sometimes. Uh, you know, he, he can get away from, you know, his technique a little bit and just start brawling. And that's not something you want to do with Trevor Peak. I don't think either guy's going to really be shooting takedowns here. I think he's going to play out on the feet. So I'm going to go with the guy who just seems more durable, who seems like he hits a little harder. I'm going to go Trevor Peak. I think he should be the favorite. I think it's going to be 15 minutes on the feet until, unless somebody gets finished. And I think the more dangerous, harder, harder hitter, more durable guy is Trevor Peak. So I'm going to go Trevor Peak, knockout, second round. Um, I do kind of like Eric Gonzalez, though. Next up, we got Mike Malat taking on Johan Lioness. Apparently, these guys are former training partners. So that was pretty interesting. Mike Malott, a pretty big favorite, and, and you got to understand why. I mean, he's the more technical guy really everywhere. I mean, this fight's pretty easy to break down. Um, you know, coming off a win over Mickey Gall, obviously that's not, you know, you can't really take a ton of from that. But, oh, another. There you go. Got to dab up. Got to start to stop doing these early morning. Anything before like 10 p.m. is early morning. You didn't know that. Um, you know, I mean, he's coming off a win over Darian Weeks. It wasn't. It was a split decision. Could have went either way. I mean, it, the guy doesn't throw a lot of volume at all. Uh, he's definitely gonna have the power advantage. Definitely. Um, you know, he could he could catch Mike. He could knock him out. <clears throat> well, Mike Malott's going to be the win, the minute winner for sure. He's going to be the one, you know, with the better grappling, the better technical striking. It's just, can Johan catch him and put him out? Um, you know, we haven't really had to see Mike Malott take a lot of big shots and come back. So we have to see, it. can his chin take someone who does have power like Lioness? It's not somebody I've liked picking or betting in the past, but he does have power. He can finish you for sure. So, Mike Malott should be the favorite. I, I like him here, but it is a little dangerous. It's a little dangerous knowing that these, these, this is a little bit lower level. Neither guy is a ton tested. So, you know, I like Mike Malott, but we got to see how his chin is, how he can, you know, take shots. And his striking, view, he does seem a little bit there to get hit. So, I wouldn't be shocked if Leon caught him, but I'm going to go Mike Malott. I'm going to take Malott. I'm thinking, I mean, honestly... Shout out to the Canadian. He's kind of doing it. Uh, I mean, he, he has a couple of submissions on here. I, I do think that it's possible. But uh, I don't know. I'm thinking more along the lines of TKO. I think he's going to get him down. Be the better grappler there. Rain down some shots from half guard and put him out. Or, you know, at least get the ref to stop him. But I wouldn't really play a prop there. Maybe inside the distance. But it could be TKO or sub. Next up, we got Tatiana Suarez taking on Montana De La Rosa. Nice to have Tatiana Suarez back, man. One of the best like prospects in women's MMA there's ever been. I mean, she is 32 years old now, so it's not that that's old by any means, but it is time to get going. Only had eight pro fights, and you know, for especially how people talk about her, it's just <sighs> hey, Whew. I'm going on my little vacation right now. It's got my sleep schedule all fucked up. Tatiana, man. People talk about her like she's a just a god or goddess. I mean, she and, and I get it. Like her last performance wasn't great, but she was already having a lot of medical issues, you gotta think. I mean, she destroyed Carlos Barza, destroyed Alexa Grasso. Uh, I mean, her, her wins before that, not not the biggest of names, but I mean, she was ragdolling those girls. Montana De La Rosa trains at Elevation Fight Team. That's a great team. I, I really don't love picking against them, but, you know, I mean, 
if these girls can take her down, if she can lose on the feet, Macy Barber, like, put, you know, outstriking her in points, you got to think Tatiana can be the same. I mean, Tatiana has just been, it's been one-way traffic in her fights, man. And as long as she's healthy, she should run through Montana De La Rosa. I think it's going to be by decision. I don't think she'll really finish her here. Um, it could happen, it, it, but... If I had to pick, I, I'd say Tatiana Suarez by decision. I think she's going to get her down. I think the striking will be pretty competitive. But um, I do feel like the takedowns, the wrestling is going to be the big difference. I think she'll get her down. Um, good ground and pound. She could finish her, but I'm thinking she just dominates 30-27. Mont Montana De La Rosa is tough. She's durable. She's going to fight to the end of the fight or, you know, fight the full 15 minutes. She's got a good gas tank, too, like everybody at Elevation. Um, but I think Tatiana will get it done three rounds to none, 30-27. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we got Augusto Sakai taking on Dontel Mays. And, uh, Augusto Sakai, man, four in a row, four losses. Definitely has been tough run. Uh, but you gotta, you know, Alistair Overeem, Jarzinho Rosenstruck, Ty Tuivasa, and Sergey Spivak. I mean, they're all finishes, but they're all tough guys. This is a big step down. I mean, Dontel... A guy who, you know, has a no contest and technically lost the fight, but you know, then Hamdi popped for some steroids. Steroids or not, that guy was no good. He had no business in the UFC, just none. And uh, I mean, it's pretty sad that to lose a fight to that guy. I mean, so sloppy. Just got outworked. And, like, that's just not a good look. Augusto Sakai, I mean, he should have the much better striking. Mike Mays does hit harder, but Sakai, <coughs> a much more technical guy. Um, You know, I mean, Mike Mays is a, a big, huge dude. And, I mean, we've seen uh, he's getting actually, like, when he got on top, uh, who was that? Freaking, uh, I just fought the other night, uh, Parisian. He was got on top of him, just like ragdolled him. That was insane. Uh, and Sakai has been taken down. He's been controlled, but like, man, this is a big step down. I do. I feel like Sakai should win this. I mean, I, I mean, four in a row. That's not good. But Mays, you lost to the worst heavyweight in the history of the UFC, potentially. So. Both guys are fades. Do you really want to trust either? I'm going to go Sakai because even off four L's, it's like it's the level of competition is not even comparison. Um, Spivak would absolutely murder that handy guy. You take him down in 10 seconds and pound him out. But give me Augusta Sakai. I'm going to take him by decision. Maze is pretty tough, but I'll take the better striker in a fight that I think is going to play out on the feet. Give me Augusta Sakai by decision. And let's move on to my favorite fight on the card. Co-main event. Andre Muniz taking on Brendan Allen. This is a dope fight, man. Two jiu-jitsu guys. Um, you know, Brendan Allen's going to still have the striking advantage, but Muniz is the... His jiu-jitsu is even better. I do think Brendan Allen's probably a little bit of the, a bigger guy, uh, even though he's a little bit of a reach disadvantage. Seems like he's probably the going to come in with a little bit, maybe a, maybe a little bit of strength on him. I guess we'll find out. I do think Muniz makes up for the, the some of that with just his overall technique. I mean, his jiu-jitsu is clean. There's black belts and there's black belts. And uh, Muniz shows, man. I mean, he broke Jacare Souza's arm. That was impressive. I mean, to take him down and submit him. And then, to, you know, he couldn't submit um Wow, just had a boxing match. Uh, Uriah Hall uh, in, the, in his last fight. But I mean, um, Still, like, did what he wanted, dominated the fight. I feel like he just, he's got to get those takedowns, man. It's going to be a matter of, is his wrestling good enough to take down Brennan Allen? Because Brennan Allen, you know, he's, he's on a streak right now. I mean, both guys have momentum. Both guys are looking good. Brennan Allen's going to be the better striker. He's won fights with his striking more than Muniz has. Muniz needs to get you down. So he needs to get Brennan Allen down. We've seen Brennan Allen t get taken down. Um, we've seen him get taken down by... Uh, uh, Kyle Dawkins several times. I, I think Muniz has better wrestling than Kyle Dawkins. Um, 
probably a little bit stronger too. I think Andre can take him down. I think he's going to be the better grappler on the ground. But I, I know that Brendan Allen's live here, man. Plus 160 is tempting. And, and, and Brendan Allen burned me before. But at least you're getting that nice big plus money. So I wouldn't blame you if you're taking Brendan Allen. I think he's a live dog. And honestly, if that line creeps up too much, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd be tempted. But I am going to take Andre Muniz. I think... If, if Kyle Dawkins can take him down several times, I think Andre Muniz can. Um, we're going to find out, man. Brendan Allen's one of those guys that, like, <sighs> oh, this is the most in a while. This is the most in a while. I'm killing. I'm just, I'm just hey, whatever. I think it's just me trying to, my body just wants more dabs. Brandon Allen's one of those guys you don't know who, what you're going to get, man. Sometimes he looks like shit. Sometimes he looks, I mean, like a future title contender. But um, <coughs> I'm going to go Muniz. <coughs> Been a little bit more consistent. Um, even one of these losses, that Jacob Malkoon won. That could have went either way. I mean, that was really close. Malkoon's pretty good, but um, is Muniz's wrestling as good as Malcolm? We're going to have to find out. But I do think his jiu is better. If he gets him down, I don't think he'll need as many takedowns. So give me Andre Muniz. I'm going to take him by submission. I think if he does get him down, he will eventually find the sub. But a, deci a decision is very, you know, that could definitely happen too. Um, but I will take Muniz. I think he's the rightful favorite. And let's move, into the, move on to the main event. Nikita Krylov, Ryan Spann, um... It's an interesting fight, man. I mean, Ryan Spann, both these guys, man. They, uh, speaking of the last fight, not knowing what you're going to get with Brennan Allen. <coughs> I mean, exactly the same with these guys. Krylov here. I mean, let's go into the ground with Paul Craig. The only way you're going to lose that fight. I'll give him a pass with Ankalai I've lost. And, and the Glover loss, and even the Jan Blockowitz loss. Misha Serkinov submitting you, okay, you know, it was really that Paul Craig one that really bothered me. And I mean, we even in some of these wins, he does make some, some questionable decisions. The, the fight IQ can be a little off sometimes. But Ryan Spann, you can say the same about him. I mean, Johnny Walker finishing you in the first round, okay, you know, I'll give you a bit of a pass there, but... But Anthony Smith put a beating on him. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, even the Sam Alvey fight, that was that was a little dicey. I do think he's gotten better since then. Um, he says that the last fight was the first time he really took his training camp seriously. I mean, he exaggerated to the max. But maybe I'll buy that. Like, he took it more seriously than And he is at 4-7 to seven May. You would think that you'd want to, you know, when you're training at such a great gym, get your money's worth. But, hey... Everybody does things differently. I mean, the guy's 31. Krilov's only 30, so they're super young for light heavyweight, honestly. Um, you know, you see these light heavyweights, heavyweights go on, go on for a long time. Um, obviously, they're, uh, the fact they're not cutting as much weight plays a difference. These light heavyweights do cut, obviously. the heavy, Most of the 90% of the heavyweights are not cutting weight. These guys are, for sure, but I do think just the, or the, the, the weight makes it to where you can get away with going a little bit older. You know, it's less reliant on speed and reflexes. But in this fight, you know, Krilov, I, I, he's the minute winner. He should be the favorite. But, um, you know, Span's so dangerous. Not just with his power, with his hands, but he's got a nasty guillotine, and Krilov likes to put throw himself in submissions. So, I, I, you know, Krilov should be the favorite. I think he's the minute winner here. But can he go five rounds without getting ate by one of those right-hand missiles or that big guillotine. I don't know. I mean, I, I do think that there's some, you know, Span's a live dog. I definitely think he's live here, one of the more live underdogs, because he, he definitely there's a path of victory, man. Five rounds. Krilov is a hittable guy. He throws himself in the submissions. I could see Span knocking him out. I could see Span catching him in that guillotine. So I'm going to go Krilov. I'm going to go Krilov by TKO um, after catching him with a big shot, probably. Uh, jumping on top and landing some ground and pound finishing him. He might, it might be another rear naked choke, but I'm going to go Krilov. The under is going to be juiced, I already know. Um, Span could definitely catch him, though, man. I'm going to go Krilov, but 
This is going to be a crazy fight. And the winner of this fight, man, putting getting kind of interesting. Uh, especially if they do it, like, you know, by finish, which you got to think it's going to be. If it's a dominating finish by one of these guys, they're going to be into the, into the you know, title picture. Obviously not, like, directly there yet, but getting a big fight, I mean... Uh, both guys are, you gotta say, yeah, they're a little, the fight IQ can be questionable. They put on a, uh, entertaining fights, and that's what the UFC loves, and they get finishes. So, I do not see this going five rounds. I would be very surprised. Um, give me Nikita Krilov TKO. I'm gonna say probably second round. Um, but that'll do it. I'm, I'm gonna take Krylov TKO, Andre Muniz sub, Augusto Sakai decision, Tatiana Suarez decision, Mike Malat. TKO, um, Trevor Peak KO, Jasmine Jazdavicius, uh, decision, Jordan Levitt sub, Charles Johnson decision, Joe Selecki sub, uh, Aliyev, or Aliyev by decision, um, Cowan by decision, um, and Armfield TKO. Those are going to be my picks. Um, I'll let you guys know as far as my bets. I'll do a short video before the uh, before the card comes out. Probably uh, Friday night or something. But um, until then, man, I appreciate you guys. It's been real. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. Let me know You know the bet you're most confident in, the one that you hate, uh, the, 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 the biggest fade on the card, you know. I like going back and forth with you guys, whether it's in the comments or on Twitter. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you next week. It's a big pay-per-view. I can't wait for it. But I will be live for these fights on Saturday, uh, so come through and hang out. It's been real. Uh, until then, make some money. Peace. Enjoy the fights.